Death Watch. Welcome back to Cradle of the World, a D&D 3.5 campaign by Death Watch Productions. I'm Brandon, the Dungeon Master, and we pick up today. The uh, heroes had been told at the end of last session there'd be about a week before anything of note happens, so they had some time to decide what they'll be doing during that week. The uh, rocks had um, been awakened by a spell, and so they spent some time uh, getting to know their now sentient uh, mounts, and then um, Graham had had a vision towards the end of the last session as well of uh, some dark, frightening entity deep below the sea that was locked behind a gate, and that gate was held by a chain, and there was a tendril uh, extending from that chain off to the southeast, and he had come away with the feeling that whatever that tendril was, it was sapping the strength of the chain. And he knew deep in his heart that if whatever was behind that gate were to escape, it would be cataclysmic. So the battle and the storm had ended, and um, the heroes at the home of the heroes, they had um, some cleaning up to do, the lighthouse the top of the lighthouse was shorn off in the storm and there's some cosmetic damage to the home and there were some sea animals that had been thrown into the yard. Uh, those have been cleared away by the rocks eating, eating <laughs> them. So that's not that big of a deal, but um, we'll pick up right there. Uh, the storm has ended, but um, nobody's had time to go check on the villagers at the temple grounds who were praying to Coralon. Uh, to give him strength to shelter them from the storm. So in, you're in the home, and Graham, you'd had this vision, and um, we're, we'll take this time for each of you to explain what you've been doing for this week. Uh, but first, we'll introduce our players. So let's start with Chris. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm playing Casimir, a uh, hero of the rock, I believe. Um yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Time to sit down with a good book and start writing away. <laughs> and then Travis? Hi, I'm Travis playing Graham, the hero of the sea. And I am also going to be snuggled up to a good book. Not because I want to, but because I failed my willpower rolls. I'll also try to blow up our hero house by using the gnomic transmogrification device to recharge my ring of ram. And uh, that should about cover it for the week. All right, Justin. So I'm Rohan, the hero of the sky, and I'm going to be working on getting myself a spell book for my newly acquired wizard abilities and scribing some spells into it. All right. And then John. John. Uh -huh. <laughs> John plays Fenrith, the, pal the, the cleric of Corallon. But he will Paladins, be right. out today, so I will be taking care of any necessary things his character might do. And so we'll go ahead and get started. So we'll start <clears throat> with Graham. So Graham, you had had that vision, but also you had this compulsion to finish this book that you had started. So we'll talk about that. <clears throat> okay. Now, um, that book, let me see if I can... How had I described that book? I think it was big. It was a big book with like metal clasps, if I remember correctly. And um, it kind of went into ways to focus your attention on a single thing. But I only read it for maybe a few minutes before I passed out. And I fell asleep. So that's as much as I got out of it. All right. Yes. Okay. So um, <clears throat> let me see if there's any... And do you have that in your inventory? Uh, it might be one of my unidentified magic items, but I don't see it. Oh, Tome of All Understanding right. plus five. There it is. All right. So that has been identified? Yeah. Yes, there it is. Okay. All right. Yeah. So this thick book contains tips for improving instinct and perception, but entwined. All right. So you'll need to spend 48 hours reading this book. Yeah, if I have a compulsion to do it, I mean, I'll do as much as I, I can. Yeah. 
reasonably. Right. Few. So this will take you like once you start, like you know, you had thumbed through it a bit, but you hadn't uh, really put your heart into it. But now this compulsion forces you to. So this will take you forty-eight hours over a minimum of six days. So you'll be spending a lot of time on that each day of this week. Okay. Um, How do I react if somebody pulls me away to do something else? <laughs> well, I mean, is, I mean, that'd be up to you. I mean, but this is like, you know, you feel very strongly that you need to be reading this book. So imagine you, um, you know, just started a, a new video game and someone comes bothering you about let's go chop wood or whatever that that's how you're going to feel about it. Like, um, so, I mean, it'll be up to you whether you want to get snippy about it or if you just close and lock your door or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I think I'll hide out in my room, but I won't get irritated because Graham usually seeks to appease. So I'll probably just be like, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, in a minute, and just hope that they disappear and forget that I agreed to anything. Okay. All right. So you'll be working on that. And then, uh, Casimir, what would you be doing over this week? Uh, writing spells into my spell book and making scrolls, probably. Okay. All right. So, yeah, you'll be spending a lot of time doing that as well. And then, um, Rohan, what about you? Same. I've got three levels of spells. I've got to find my own spell book and then scribe some scrolls into it. Okay. Or some spells into it. All right. So, uh, you know, you're all engrossed in your own activities. Nobody sees Fenrith for m most of the week either because he goes off to the temple and spends most of his time there working with Yathlani, um, getting the things together for the um, the general conversion, basically, um, and what will become, at least according to him, the regular uh, worship by the village, by the, the elves of Cradle of Corallon. So that's what he's working on. And... Uh, there are some times where it becomes a little difficult for some of you to focus because um, Folwin, he gets people out here pretty quick to start working on fixing up the place. So there's been a whole wall was ripped out by Tempest uh, in, so that she could get the whale out of the living room that'll need to be repaired and the window will need to be repaired and then uh, the lighthouse as well and then general cleaning and uh, some roof repair on the stables and on the house itself. So sometimes it gets pretty noisy, but you're all pretty good at concentrating on your tasks, so you stay focused on those things. And uh, So we'll talk about what sorts of scrolls you're going to be making, um, Casimir. Uh, probably, let's see. And which spell probably you're going to be writing in well, your book probably, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Blink, greater invisibility. Do I have blink or did I pass it up? Blink would probably have to be put into my spell book then if I don't got it. Yeah. Uh, Are you there, Kazan? Like oh. Sorry, I was muted, right? Yeah, okay. Yep. Um, uh, haste, uh, probably greater invisibility. Uh, and then I'll probably be scry or not scrying, uh, putting uh, into my spell book uh, scry. And uh looks like I don't have blink. I swear I did, but I'm not seeing it. So I'll put blink into my spell book as well. And then probably make scrolls of that as well. All right. Okay, and then um so Rohan, you're working on spell book as well. Yeah. Um I had been using Casimir's spell book to prepare spells, but I'm gonna need my own if I'm gonna do it reliably. Okay. I'm trying to see about how much time I've got to spend on it because I'm going to end up scribing five first-level spells, two second-level spells, and two third-level spells. Let's see. Scribing a scroll check. takes one day for each thousand gold pieces in its base price. So you'll have to use that to determine how many. Well, and you're just putting I'm them not in a spell be, book? Yeah, I'm not making scrolls of them. I'm just writing them into my spell book, but that also takes time. I'm trying to see exactly how much that is. Let's see. So, go to each time a character gains a new wizard level, she gains two spells of their choice to add to their spell book. And it doesn't really give a time, but we can use the same amount of time as 
it takes to scribe a scroll. Oh, must spend a day studying the spell and then do a spellcraft check because I'll be copying them from either Casimir's book or the other one. Okay. So a day per spell. All right. Yeah, 24 hours regardless of the spell's level. Then one page per spell level. Yeah. Yeah, I liked keeping track of that with old Frundar back in the day. I don't know why. <laughs> well, didn't he have to have like three or four books yeah, to I, have his whole spell list? I had multiple spell books, but I was also <laughs> festooned with scrolls. <laughs> yeah. Constantly wondering what would happen if I got hit by a fireball. Well, first I think I'd have to, what, you got to like critically fail the reflex save to have your items damaged. If I remember yeah. right. And then contained items, like stored items, are pretty low on the list of items affected. So if I was holding it in my hand, then it would be dangerous. But the way I described it was that it was like I had all these uh, belts for like easy access scroll holsters. I think if you just put read magic on yourself each day, you can avoid the spellcraft check, Justin. Really? Yeah, I believe For copying from another spellbook? I believe so. It says they must spend a day studying the spell, and then at the end of the day, they make a spellcraft check, DC 15 plus a spell level. Uh, if it's specialized, again, a plus two. Well, I you just I thought it was skipped the ciphers step. Mm. Right. Yeah. Does it call for another read magic or spellcraft later on? Well, no. I, I think, think one... I was misunderstanding what his spellcraft was for, because there's a spellcraft check for copying, or not copying, from preparing for another spell book yeah. but you can skip yeah. that with read magic right yeah but no this one is, is to see if i i understand it enough to basically it. Yeah. rewrite it in my own spell okay. language yeah it's basically a second one after the decipher stage yeah all right and then um graham you also wanted to uh recharge your ring of ram with that uh gnome pedestal in there yeah i want to do a hundred gold coins along with it this time. So I have uh, five charges on there now, I believe. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, you, yeah, so you go up to that thing and it's got that, you know, plate on top where you can put the, the ring and the slots to put the, uh, uh, the gold in. And so you put that hundred gold pieces in and then, you know, it, it, the familiar it starts hissing and shaking and rumbling, and it it's pretty powerful. It's actually shaking the house, knocking things off of walls, pictures and things like that, uh, knocking dishes over, and uh, you know generally making a racket. And then let me get the you know then there's a flash of light, and then the uh, and then it goes still, and that ring sits there on that plate. And uh, so at this point. Uh, you've done this and, you know, we'll say it's like after your reading for the day. So it's pretty late. And so it wakes up the whole house, but then you've got this <laughs> ring sitting there and, uh, you catch uh, sight of something out of the corner of your eye and you turn and you see a massive horse, a flaming horse, uh, standing right behind you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'll, um. You know, I'll turn around and I'll do a double take and uh, I'll tumble away drawing my dagger as I do so. But I'll just pause there waiting for the flaming horse to do something. Okay. Yeah. So, Graham, you dive away or whatever and you pull out your dagger and you're looking at this flaming horse. And you don't know a lot about horses, but this is a clearly the sort of horse that would be used for hauling loads, not running fast because it's enormous. Um, like almost to the point where it's difficult to believe. So, um, you know, you dive away and you're looking at this ready for it to attack, but it is the most placid appearing animal you've ever seen. And it simply gazes at you. Now it's on fire, but doesn't seem to be bothered by the flames. And you have seen in the past, uh, flaming horses that were evil creatures that you fought against this is clearly not that to your untrained eye at least this is just a normal horse that's on fire but it doesn't seem to be bothered by the flames and it's not being injured by them however you can tell right away 
the floor is. And, um, you know, so this fire dripping from it is, uh, definitely <laughs> starting to char the, the floor. Um, and you're up on the second floor there now, uh, Rohan and Casimir, uh, well, Casimir, for sure you wake up from the sound <laughs> of the, uh, that, that pedestal doing all its shaking. Okay. Rohan, um, do you think that the fact that the top of the lighthouse is gone would stop you from sleeping out there? Um, cause it's still, I mean, it's good weather. It's not, you know, if that's not available, I might, you know, bed down next to my rock. Okay. So let me do a roll. Um, all right. So Rohan, you, um, you do wake up. You don't hear anything, but you feel the ground shaking a bit, and so that snaps you awake. Okay. But it doesn't last long enough to continue after you're awake, so it's one of those situations where you, you're not sure if it was real or you dreamed it, but you, it does snap you awake. And you look around the okay. stables, and the rocks are sleeping peacefully. They don't seem to... All right, just to be... Yeah. Just to be safe, I'll step outside and make sure that, you know... No big explosions happen in the town or anything like that. Okay. All right. And then, so, Casimir, you wake up because your whole room is shaking. Um, you know, this thing is on the same floor as you sleep on, but you're in your room and you've got it set up however you would. But, you know, things are falling off of tables and, and you know, equipment's bouncing on the floor, and that's what wakes you up. Yeah, I'll uh, hop up out of bed and... Uh... I guess I'll start grabbing anything that is breakable. <laughs> Keep it from breaking. <laughs> Will be my first priority. <laughs> okay. Um. Let's, all right. So yeah, you hop up and you start trying to grab things to, you know, cushion their fall or whatever. So um, that's what you're working on. But that it, the shaking stops pretty quickly after that. So. Um, nothing of any real importance to you breaks. I mean, some things might've been a little close, like some potions fell on the floor, but the, you know, the bottles are thicker than, than that. So they don't break, but, um, you know, that, that shaking soon stops. And then Graham, so you're, you're there next to that, uh, pedestal at this point, because you turned around to look at this. And so you can see that it spit out another one of those slips of paper. Uh, but that horse is just staring at you placidly, leaking fire all over the place. Is there a an entryway this that's even big enough for this horse to move through? Because my idea is to sidle around, and I don't really know how to handle animals as Graham. So I guess I'll just start, like, snapping my fingers and clicking my tongue, saying, Here, horse. Here, horse. Trying to get yeah. him to uh, leave the area. Right. Well, where he's standing... Um, is like in the entryway to this room. And this room is like next to the practice floor that's on the second level. And it's got, you know, not just this pedestal, it's got other stuff in it as well. But the um, there's not a door. And so right behind that horse is the stairwell, the stairway that leads down. And it's not, I mean, it's pretty big stairwell. It's pretty okay. wide. So you think that it might have a little trouble making the turn, as um, once it gets down the first flight, but it should be able to manage. So what I have to move through its area, basically. Uh, yeah. To get to try to direct it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll try to tumble around if I can or through. Okay. Yeah. Let me roll that for you. Got a twenty-seven. All right. All right. So yeah. So um. So you tell you do that, like to get around the horse and. Um, and you, you managed to get through that area to behind the horse without getting any burns, but that quick movement spooked the horse. <laughs> and so, you know, it lets out like a thunderous snort and then darts forward into that room, um, kicking at you as it goes. Um, let me, so this would, but I mean, it miss it misses, okay. but it does, it does, um, dart into that room. It um, slams into that pedestal, and it uh, looks like it's about to fall over. But somehow, even though you're sure it went past the point of, you know, of its center of balance, somehow it stays upright and sits nicely back where it was. But then that, that horse is further in that room 
they can fire <laughs> over everything. And at that point, one of the carpets in there does catch fire. Now, um, Rohan, you step outside mm -hmm. to take a look around, not sure what woke you up, but, um, you don't see anything or hear anything that, uh, that causes concern until you look up at the house and you can see that there's a, uh, a glow coming from one of the upper windows that, uh, does not match lantern light. And, uh, so you notice that could be okay. somebody's uh, doing magic up there or something could be on fire because that's what the glow looks like. It has that orangish yellow fire glow to it. All right. I'll start jogging there. I won't be in like extreme hurry cause I don't hear any cries of alarm, but you know, I'll head in that direction. Okay. All right. So Casimir, you hear that, um, outside your room, you hear that, that loud snort and you hear the, the really loud thumping on the floor. Um, you're not uh, sure what it came from, but it's enough to alarm you that something made a sound that shouldn't be in the house. Yeah, I'll grab my uh, trident and peek my head out the door. <laughs> All right, so you peek your head out, um, and your your room is set at the end of the hallway. Across that hallway is um, uh, Rohan's room. His door's closed, but you look down the hallway past Fenrith and Graham's doors and you can see to that area where um where that horse was and so where Graham stands now is just out of your vision and of course you can't see into the room but you can see a uh the unmistakable glow of fire coming from that that darkened storeroom down there all right yeah I'll rush that way uh <laughs> I'll guess I'll uh call out you know Graham, there's a fire. Yeah, so you rush you rush down the hall and you say that, and just as you say it, you see Graham there standing at the top of the stairwell, looking into that room. No. And it's at that point that you can see in there that there's a giant horse that's on fire. Now, um, when you see it, it's it's placid again. It's not a l alarm like it was when Graham did his ninja roll. But um, it's so it's basically standing there <laughs> facing away from you guys, but it's got its head turned to look at you. And I mean, you see the same thing that I described to Graham. It just is a horse and it looks very placid and calm, but it is on fire. And that fire has spread to one of the carpets so far on the floor. All right. Uh, I guess I'll. Uh... Where did this come from, Graham? <laughs> <laughs> this is somehow your fault. <laughs> It just appeared. I think that magic storms corrupted magic on the whole island. Oh, did yeah, he, do, uh, a, do a bluff. <laughs> yeah, that's probably where. try and say that, yeah. Did the uh, gnomish recharging altar shake violently uh, last time we used it, too? Yep. All right. What is that? It's uh sense, sense motive, motive, right? I'll give you a plus four because of that shaking. Well, I think he's probably got me. Huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean... It's plausible. That, that pedestal did shake last time you used it, but Graham wouldn't lie about something like this, so... <laughs> <laughs> I think that right there dis dispels any of the bluff attempt. <laughs> yeah, so I'm also, like, uh, trying to call the horse like I would a dog or a cat at the moment as well. Yeah, I guess I'll <laughs> aid him, or he can aid me, and uh, try to get this horse out using uh, Handle Animal. Okay. Yeah, I'm untrained in it, so I don't think I can do better than a 10, or however that works. Yes, yeah, so I'll take lead. Okay. But uh, is this actually just a normal, regular horse, or is there, I don't know, like a arcane check? Is it a magical creature? or? Well, I mean, you can't. You don't know just by looking at it. It is on fire, but it doesn't seem to be harmed by it. But the look of it itself, it looks perfectly normal. Um, all right, so what did you guys get here? I was aiding Casimir. So 20. I guess in the end it didn't matter. <laughs> okay. All right, so yeah, that'll be good enough. So, um, so with that, you're basically like trying to get the horse enticed to come to you um 
and it does so. You know, you're you're doing things that you've seen done before, or that you that have worked with like the rocks or whatever. And uh, the fact that it is looking at you and doesn't seem frightened of you uh, seems to work in your favor. And so it turns very plodding, very slow, very loud, stomping on the floor <laughs> and spitting fire all over everything. But then it does start walking towards you. I want to keep one eye open as we're leading it for anything uh, really flammable that I can scramble and move out of the way. Oh, okay. Well, outside that room, there isn't much. Um, and the stairwell doesn't have anything besides the wood itself. So uh, there's there's no carpets or anything like that to catch fire outside of that room. But at this point, that, that carpet that did catch fire, um, that is completely in flames now and that could easily spread to other other things in the room yeah if we get to a point where i can get around the how the horse without spooking it then i'll head back up that stairwell and try to put things out okay all right so rohan uh now it's your turn okay so yeah i'll head in and head up the stairs towards where i saw the light coming from yeah so at this point like you get up that first flight and you look up and you can see uh, Casimir backing down the steps and there's a giant flaming horse following him down. Um, would a knowledge nature um, help me know what this thing is? Yeah, roll it. Yeah, so, you know, just looking at it without the fire, it's 100% a normal horse. I mean, not the sort of breed that you would have on the island, but um, it's clearly a, a horse bred for hauling heavy loads. So it, it's not like I recognize it as like a nightmare or something like that? No. Nope, just as a horse that's on fire. Knowledge nature wouldn't cover that anyway. Yeah, that's true. Um, I yeah, guess I'll... I'll uh, oh, sorry. Go for it. Go to help Casimir lead this thing down and out of the house so we don't catch our house on fire. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the help, Rohan. Graham claims that the storm must have brought this here. Or caused it to manifest or something. How else can you explain me. it? <laughs> were you doing anything you weren't supposed to, Graham? No. Okay. What so, were you doing uh, when it appeared? Now, Graham, you can step aside in that hallway and let the horse go by. And then Casimir and Ron don't have any trouble at that point getting it out of the house. Uh, Folwin is up now, and he is in that um, main main room there and he sees the horse and his jaw just drops and he doesn't have anything to say as you guys lead it out the door <laughs> into the yard um and then graham you can go in and try to fight that fire okay i mean if it's small enough to smother it i will if not i'll look for some type of basin to start pouring water on stuff uh i can create water at will so i guess i'll just if it's empty i'll fill it up and and dump it and rinse and repeat yeah, okay. Yeah, you can do that with a with a bucket and uh in short order you've got the carpet put out and it's just a charred ruin, but the fire didn't spread to anything else. That was a close one. Yeah. So then Casimir and Ron, you guys you get the horse out into the yard, um and uh and then it just stops there and it's looking at you, waiting for you to tell it what to do next. Um just on fire, just dripping fire on the ground. But luckily, there's no <laughs> vegetation here to catch fire, so it's just falling into the dirt. But all right, let's. Uh, I'll. Uh, I got it prepared. I uh, don't think I do immediately. Let's see if I got a scroll of it. I don't. Son of a. Uh, oh, I do have it prepared. Okay. Detect magic. <laughs> okay. And I'll take a good look at this horse, and uh, maybe there's a way we can put the. Uh, fire out because it's clearly magical of some sort i don't know if the horse is uh i'll, I'll be talking to rohan on that kind of spitballing okay um i'll use my resist energy spell to resist uh the first 20 points of fire damage and then go up and actually start interacting with the horse like trying to you know like i would a normal horse get it used to me get it comfortable with me that type of thing you know, let it nuzzle my hand and kind of stroke its neck. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, Casimir, you cast Detect Magic, and um, 
So then you can detect the magical aura, and uh, there's just one, and it's uh, moderate. Okay. And uh, let's see what else. Yeah, that's it. Just the one. So the um, the horse appears to be real, but some you know it has there's some magical effect causing it to be on fire, and it would be no different from like uh, what's that spell? Continual flame. Well, no, because that doesn't burn uh yeah yeah like like fire shield okay some something like that some sort of evocation um but that's the only answers you can get like where it came from you, you can't tell all right so yeah um i'll tell i'll say to rohan that uh the horse appears to be actually real uh, not a summoned creature but uh unfortunately the uh spell on it seems to be some sort of fire shield type spell and uh mm -hmm. i have no means of dispelling it <laughs> well how long do those kinds of spells usually last it could be made permanent perhaps but uh it doesn't seem to be harming the horse at all it wouldn't but it would harm everything else around it uh let's see uh so once i get the horse kind of used to me i'll see if it'll like how it reacts when i go to try and ride it you want like a handle animal on that yeah this is where my negative charisma hurts ouch yeah so this um horse clearly is not trained to be ridden so okay like when you when it can detect what you're attempting to do it starts jumping around and okay yeah as soon as it starts right that way i'll i'll kind of back away say so, well it seems to be a wild horse at least not trained for being ridden perhaps domestic labor uh, Possibly. It does seem comfortable around people, for the most part, anyway. So if that is Fire Shield, you potentially took 1d6 points of damage plus 1 per caster level up to 15. <laughs> well, that's why I, I cast the Resist Energy, so it absorbs yeah. the first 20 points of, of fire damage each round. Oh, well, that's a level 4 spell, so there's a good chance that... Uh... <laughs> uh... Anyway, Rohan, I don't know what to do with this creature. Animals seem to be your specialty. And mm. I'll walk away and leave it with Ron. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess I'll see about leading it to a place where there is no... nothing flammable, and then try and find something to feed it. Okay. Well, um, you know, most of the yard has no real vegetation, so there's nothing flammable there inside the wall. And of okay. course, you've got plenty of like straw or hay in the stables for bedding. But the problem is that before it can eat it, it catches it on fire and burns it away. So kind of what I was worried about. They're opportunistic omnivores. Feed it some chickens. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll try feeding it different things um, that wouldn't immediately combust. All right. Yeah, you're able to give it like some apples. Okay. And see if I can rustle up like a chain or something to use as like a, a lead rope. Okay. Now, Graham, you're in that room and you've put the carpet out and, uh, you know, so it's smoked up the place pretty good, uh, but there's windows you can open to air the place out. And Fallwin comes up and he stands there looking in and he sees the carpet and he's got like a just incredibly disappointed look on his face, but he doesn't say anything. It's okay, Fulwin. I need to, uh, on the down low, snatch that paper from the machine, though. Oh, okay. Gotta hide the evidence. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, the ring's still on there, too. <laughs> right, right. Gotta get those back. Fulwin, uh, you should probably get more water in case it's smoldering. I used all the water here. So, uh, yeah, he he says, yes, sir, and he goes out to get some, some water. <laughs> And then I'll retrieve those items. All right. Okay, so that uh, paper says, uh, When the time comes, that air turns to dust. Two siblings mark bloodshed of blue blood. And then it has that same, um, what was it? I had it written down. I seem to have lost it. Yeah, I forget it had like a, it's almost like a timestamp or something. 
or a signature, your lucky Powerball numbers for the week. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to, I have notes on it. No. I just didn't have it opened. I didn't record what the signature was. I just had the body of the, what were in the last notes. But I didn't really do a full reading of it anyways. I had to get it out of sight. I'll never know how many charges, if any, came back on this ring because I can't ask Casimir to identify it. That would give up the the game. I'm living in a house of lies. Would uh, Graham... You could always come back tomorrow and say I did it this morning. <laughs> yeah, would Graham know, hesitate? That's too close. Would you buy lies it? Lies upon lies upon <laughs> lies upon lies. I think, uh, in, at least until that book's finished, that Graham probably would still come and ask for the ring to be identified. That's true. That probably would. <laughs> he would just have oh. some stupid lie or something. Uh, uh, when the horse was summoned, uh, the magical storm also recharged my ring, I think. <laughs> oh, right. Gulivar's Prophecies, LLC. There we go. All rights reserved. All right, so Rohan, you are trying to figure out what to do with this horse. So you find a chain you can use as a lead rope. Um, and, you know, you can lead it wherever you want to from there. Okay. Yeah, I'll try and lead it to an open part of the yard and, and you know, tether it to something so it doesn't wander around spreading destruction. Okay. All right. Yeah, so that'll, um, you know, it'll stay chained up wherever you put it. Then once that's done, I'll head back in to try and find out why this thing was in the house. I think the game's up as soon as you see the room it occurred in. Because <laughs> <laughs> there is the gnomic device. And you um, put the ring away? Yeah. Yeah, I'll put it in okay. my pouch. What time of night did I do this? <laughs> Well, you know, you got to spend like eight hours reading per day. And so it yeah. would have been after that. So, you know, it would have been, you know, after bedtime, probably after 10. Like three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I guess um, Chris has the right idea. When I see him uh, next, if he comes up, I'll, I'll ask him that maybe... You know, you should uh, identify some of our magic items to see if something's changed with all the weird magic going on. Yeah, there you are some items you guys ring. still have that haven't been identified. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's this, and then also my ring. You know. <laughs> well, I I can get to the other stuff tomorrow, I guess, Graham. But you're we already identified your ring shortly after we returned. So. Right, but the wild magic might have affected things. <laughs> I think I'll just stare at him. <laughs> like, kind of just dead, deadpan stare. <laughs> Staring contest is one of my favorite games. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll shake my head and walk away. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I know better than to, um, to push for the identify. Uh, so I'll just... Uh, Look but sad. you know, Rohan can do it now, too. Can he? Well, I'll have to... Potentially. I can't until tomorrow. I'd have to borrow Casimir's book. I don't have Identify. But yes, I, I should be able to tomorrow. So, um, Brandon, do they... I mean, there's a lot of circumstantial evidence now uh, to see through my bluff. Do they get a re-roll, or does it just fall apart at this stage? Yeah, I mean, now that now that everybody's awake... And the danger has passed and you have time to really think about what's going on. It's like, you know, it, coupled with the shaking that woke you, it was pretty clear what happened here. <laughs> <laughs> so, Graham, what happened again? Well, I was, uh, you know, just doing some routine uh, recharging of my magic items and... Everything was going as it normally does, and next thing I know, there's a flaming horse in the room. Hmm. <coughs> First, the the wand of curing gained some strange powers that we don't understand, and now this. Well, yeah. Should we chart? Should we check what the wand does now? Casimir uh, said to wait till it was safe. That's why I was out here every or after 
everybody went to sleep, you know, so it was safe. All right, I could cast well, it on you right now if you'd like. That that's okay. That's okay. Um perhaps tomorrow I can borrow Casimir's spellbook and and train myself on this identify spell and we can see what happened to both the rod of healing and the ring of ram that you have. Oh, tomorrow's so far away. I know, but given the events of tonight, perhaps it's best that we all rest for the rest of today. Especially given that you, Graham, will have to be the one that puts the horse out of its misery when it begins to starve to death. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, since we don't know what's going to happen next, I mean, if a flaming horse appears randomly, who knows what could happen next? How do we proceed? Do we need to keep a watch? Well, perhaps we could move this gnomish device to a different location that's not inside the house. Well, and what does that can... have to do with anything? Well, if that's the thing that's that's causing these events to happen, then putting it someplace that's a little bit safer and perhaps that we can more thoroughly lock up so that nobody stumbles on it would be a good idea. I'll give him a dubious look. <laughs> but say no more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, lock it up if you need to, Rohan. That's a good idea. We don't want anybody... Don't worry, Graham. You'll still have your chance to use it. Well, yeah, I mean, we we don't want anybody getting past a lock. <laughs> well, you are the only person in the entire <laughs> village that knows how to get past them. Well, I I'm tired now. <laughs> Yes, get some rest, Graham. Good, I'm, good night. I'm going to go back to sleep as well. <laughs> Graham is probably please, the only person. No more flaming can... horses for the night. <laughs> yeah. Graham's probably also the only person in the entire village that cares about whether or not a lock is being used. He probably has some big campaign getting people to try to lock their doors at night. <laughs> you don't know who could come through town with all these newcomers. You got to be safe. Yeah, and then I'll head to bed. Finally. Okay. And then the rest of you as well? Yeah. Yeah. I'll just continue, much like how I pretended that uh, Graham has never fallen asleep on watch. I'll also this time pretend that Graham didn't summon a horse <laughs> and use the gnomish altar without uh, <laughs> uh, just willy-nilly. Yeah. Okay. All right, so yeah, you guys go to bed, and the um, rest of the night passes without event, and you wake up the next day. So first thing you notice outside is that that horse is still chained where Rohan put it, um, still on fire. Well, perhaps Benrith can ride it. It will be pretty yeah. hard riding a corpse soon. Well, I'm sure that we can find some things that it can eat. Yeah, might I mean, be difficult, but... If you get it into his mouth fast enough, it'll just be warm. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, what is that? Like, fourth level spell? That's about level seven? Yeah. 76 plus seven, potentially. <laughs> plus it's been made permanent. <laughs> but, what was yeah, the I'll... horse doing there anyway? I'm not to be blamed. Good night. Um, So this morning, um, you know, Fallen's got breakfast ready. And when you come down, um, Lesseri is awake. And she's... Um, sitting at the table and she's got like a bowl of porridge and um, so she's she's there now because uh, she had um, you know after she had cast that spell she'd expended too much and so she was out but um, she's, she's awake now she definitely still looks even more haggard than before but more haggard than normal but she is managing to eat some of the porridge and Fulwin's given her like a, you know, with his one good eye, he's given her a wide berth and staring daggers at her every opportunity he gets. Because <laughs> he blames her for what happened to him, but um, but that's what's that's what you see when you come down. Oh yeah, did Fenrith heal his eye with uh, his regenerate spell? No, uh, basically he hasn't even been home. He went to the temple, and that's where he's been staying. So. Okay. Yeah, I think he might have been thinking about doing it, but I guess his god is more important than 
<laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So Casimir, um, can I borrow your spell book in the morning to to try and prepare, uh, identify? Of course. In fact, uh, you can identify the spells that we are the items that we need to identify, which means you get to drink have, the pearl. I only have the ability to cast it three times a day. Well, I'm fine I with that. I can't do all of them. It looks like we've got, what, eight unidentified items in addition to the uh, uh, the, the wand of cure and his ring, ring of ram. The duties of an apprentice, Rohan. I trust I, you'll have it done. Yeah. <laughs> I think you can skip the healing wand, because the reason we knew it was full is because Casimir cast Identify on it, but he didn't get the information about what the extra charges did. Uh, they were unique, um, if I'm not and mistaken. Then, so yeah, I'll I was going to see if Casimir wanted to try to dispel the the fire around mm-hmm. the horse. Yeah, I'd have to prepare that from the uh, special book. Yeah. Let me look into that. Honestly, we should just put the thing down, though. It's a misery for it to exist. Well, if we can save it, then it might be useful for the town. All righty. Uh, so, yeah, I'll give Justin my, or Rohan my spellbook, and I'll give him, you said three? Yeah. Yeah, right. maybe three. So. so I'll give him six of the pearls, and I'll tell him to crush them up and to drink them with cast when casting the spell. <laughs> Let's see. Where is it? All right. So... There you go. We're down to three after you're done identifying everything. All right. We're going to have to do go, my uh, spell checks to see if I can actually prepare spells from your book. So let's get those out of the way. So, no, I get one. What was it, 15 plus spell level to prepare from another book? Yep. <clears throat> I got 15, 15, and 30. All so right. since it's a first level spell, I only get one for the day. <laughs> but I guess I'll identify that locked book. All right, who has that? Actually, it looks like Fenrith has that, so maybe I can't. Well, that means Graham has it. I think oh. Fenrith has all the... Depends on where it's at, because yeah, it's all right. while I, I do it. like stealing, I don't like going over my weight limit. <laughs> no, I mean, that's sort of a stuff he would leave in his room, so... Oh, okay. You're a th- Thief of principle, Graham. <laughs> You'll only steal as much as you can easily carry. Right, Not so just any old rogue. Book. Yeah. yeah. And the party inventory, it's identified as unidentified locked book. I'm not seeing it in his inventory. Yeah, it just says it's carried by Fenrith, Hero of the Flame. Okay. Is that a holdover from my the book that I have or something like that? The Tome of Understanding? I'm not sure. Let me see it first. Let's see. I was just thinking about that horse wandering off just all throughout the village. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving a trail of destruction. Trying to drink from puddles that turn to steam. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And you're seeing that in his inventory, in the party inventory? Yeah, in the party inventory. It's called Locked Book. Unidentified Locked Book. Okay. Like it's I remember gone now. the yeah, yeah now it's it. gone. Yeah, I remember the book because uh, I kept uh, I kept preparing knock to try to open it up. Yeah, it I was showing forgetting. seven unidentified items in an unidentified locked book, but now there's only one unidentified item. Two. So if there's only that one unidentified item left, then I'll identify that. Okay. There's two ident. Oh, it's an unidentified metal. Never mind. Hmm. All right. So you're gonna go for. The unidentified item in Fenrith's inventory. Yeah. In the bag of holding. All right. So you identify that? Yep. All right. So this is, um, I don't know if I described it or not, but uh, this is a figurine of wondrous power, a silver raven. Mm. So I'll identify that for you. Does that mean I have two of those now? Um, who else has? I mean, that's the one I see in his inventory. So uh-huh. that's the only unidentified item in his inventory. Does somebody else have one? I thought I had one of those. I don't see it in my inventory anymore, though. Hmm. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's what his, that's what he had. And then, uh, is that all you can identify today? Yep. All right. Hmm. All right. And then what are you, um, what do you guys want to do? Well, I'll wake up and after breakfast go check around the hero house for a little bit and then start reading. Okay. I'm trying to think I, of what else I could put in that device, but I don't think I have anything else. I have to wait till later anyways. But yeah, that's it for me. <laughs> All right, and then you, Casimir? <clears throat> All right. Um, I'll prepare to spell magic and try to dispel this uh, fire on this horse for Rohan. All right, let's see how this works. So it looks like it'd be cast uh, targeted. Okay, dispel magic. All right, do your dispel check. 1d20 plus caster level. All righty. All right, so yeah, you cast that's, that dispel uh, um, and that... Y- and you're able to dispel it so that um, fire just kind of poofs out and it leaves uh, the horse behind untouched by the flames. Um, those flames hadn't been harming it, but obviously it's pretty happy about this development because it starts dancing around. Uh, yeah, on its hind legs. What's that? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, so that puts the fire out and then you just have a giant horse left behind. Then I'll spend the rest of the day... Uh... Uh, transcribe and dispel into my book, I guess, because it seems like it's kind of useful. Okay. All right. So then, um, so you're spending your day doing that, and then, Graham, you're doing your reading, and then, Rohan, you're working on your spell book still? Yep. I'm going to be doing that for most of every day. Okay. So, uh, about midday, um, around lunchtime, Lasseri says, or Fulwin comes to tell each of you that Lissari wanted to speak with you. Um, if you, when you're ready to eat lunch, she'll speak with you at the table. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll gladly go see her. I'll be down in a minute, Fulwin. I'll give okay. a non-responsive reply, you know, like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. So then, uh, basically, uh, you know, once you're there eating lunch, she. she uh, she speaks, you know, her voice is a little ragged, but she thanks each of you for your help and for trusting her. And, um, and she says that she didn't have time to explain, but that she only saw one way to save the rocks from what had afflicted them. And unfortunately she got attacked by the creatures at the same time. And she says she feels terrible about what happened to your steward, but, um, that she didn't do it on purpose. He just got too close. Well, we we greatly appreciate the help that you gave us with our rocks. I don't believe they would have survived without your help. Uh, tell me, was the casting successful? Are they awake? Yes, yes, they appear awake and altered in a way that makes them more human-like, yeah. more intelligent. I had never before cast on so many things at once, and I wasn't sure it, it would work or that I would survive it. it it but truly I was an cast impressive that display. Spell twice before, once on an alligator in the swamp, who still is my dear friend, and uh, once on a tree, who, uh, after it woke, it hated me, and I had to destroy it. So I was concerned once they woke that they might not feel loyalty to you, depending on how they had been treated in the past. Well, I. Our- Relationship with our rocks do not seem to have changed much, so I suppose that's a good sign for how we've treated them. Very good. Well, what I wanted to speak with you about, specifically you, Rohan, is now that the storm has passed, it's time for me to be getting home. The Very well. The swamp and I miss each other when I'm apart. If you don't mind me asking a question, when I was at your house and we were near the swamp, I saw something in your swamp that looked like one of the creatures that attacked us when the storm came. I was wondering if those things came from the swamp or if they were, if that was just an anomaly. Uh, I don't believe they came from the swamp. I believe they came from the lightning. 
Hmm. Or the storm itself. With my very own eyes, I saw them appear here on the grounds of your home after lightning struck. But I've never seen the like before in my whole life. Nothing like that has ever come out of the swamp. Hmm. <clears throat> Would you perhaps be willing to lend your strength to aid us in our fight against these, whatever this is, it's trying to destroy our town and our island? Uh, I <coughs> absolutely would be willing to, but I don't have my strength unless I'm at home. I need some time to rest and recuperate, and then I'll be able to read the lines and the winds, and I should be able to help you then. Very well. But I feel um, as if there is something far away uh, pulling energy from our island. But that's that's all the information I have at the moment. Well, I have no doubt that you can take care of yourself. I, I must warn you that villagers not too far north of you have, were taken by some sort of creatures, and the entire farmhouse had been raided and everyone was gone. Yes, Due to the storm, I was unable to follow them, but, but uh, there are enemies on our island that don't seem like they'll hesitate in attacking. Will you be safe by yourself? Enemies for the villagers, yes. Enemies for me, no. They know better than to come near me. Then do you know who these enemies are? I don't know them by name. They are new. I know not where they came from. But they sustain themselves drinking the blood of the living. Well, if they're enemies of the villagers, do you know where they reside? That we as the heroes can go and face them? End this threat to the villagers? I don't. I don't know where. I felt their presence in my swamp, but I was able to persuade them to leave. And uh, since then, I'm not sure where they went. I'm not sure where they came mm. from. But I warned. I warned those people when they, when they passed through to set up their homes there. I warned them. They didn't listen. Who would listen? Look at me. Who would listen to someone like me? Well, I would. Well, that's Someone. why you are still alive, and they are not. Anyway, um, she says, yeah, uh, absolutely, it will help. And even if it's not appreciated, and even if people don't treat her the way they ought to, but she needs to be home so she can recuperate. Very well. Um, would you like an escort? Yes. Yes, that's what I'm asking, is if you will take me home. Here, I don't have yes, the strength so to make it on my own. Yes, I'll be more than happy to help you home. Um, would you mind if we take some of the villagers with us that are heading back to their farms? No, that's I, fine I, with me. I must uh, convince them to uh, follow the guidings of the unicorn that dwells within the forest now. Okay. Yeah, she says she doesn't mind if they, if they go okay. along. Okay. Casimir, All right, so Graham, the would you like you, to join us? Yeah, everybody make a, let's, everybody do a, see, let me, yeah, do a sense motive. In the tower, or? Yeah. Oh, there, I don't think it much matters for me. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, anyway. So, yeah, that's, that's what she wanted to ask. Well, uh, let's, sorry, I am very thankful for your help and your assistant with the rocks, but, uh. I believe Rohan is more than able to take you home. Uh, good day, and if ever you need uh, assistance from me, all you have to do is ask, but right now I'm rather busy, so if you'll all excuse me, and I'll go back to my room. Okay. All these people cutting into my day. <laughs> <laughs> why Disintegrate was made. Uh, I was going to say, I, um, unless they persisted, I probably didn't even come down at the summons. <laughs> That's why I said I'd be down in a minute. But let's assume that I did, in which case I will, of course, join yeah. you, Rohan. I just figure we got cut scened. Well, um, no. Uh, uh, Graham, like, when she wants to go, it, it will be during this time when you're supposed to be reading. And so, you know, you just feel that power, powerful compulsion to, to let Rohan to take care of it so you can focus on what you're doing. Okay. Well, yeah, I'll say as much as I have to get back to my studies, unfortunately. I travel safe to find too much. Once more, okay? 
for right now. Okay, Rohan. <laughs> All right. Um, speaking of Fenrith, uh, Graham, I'm just looking in your inventory, and you had ident- unidentified items there, and I don't see them now. Do you know what happened to them? Hmm. Did I? I thought I had all my not unident or identified. I have old notes from last season. Let me pull those up. Because I remember I had like a rusty sphere amongst other things, but I used a lot of them. They were like one-off items. Oh, okay. All right. Um, yeah, so then Rohan, she says tomorrow because she's not well enough to do it today. So tomorrow, if you could take her home, she'd appreciate it. Okay, so, um, Graham, you wanted to identify some scrolls? Yeah, I'll work, I'll, I'll work on that after my reading's done for the day. Okay, and then, um, right, so that day will pass, and Ron's agreed to take Lasseri back to her home the next day, and then, Casimir, so you're working up in your room as well, so we'll go ahead and call all that the end of that day, and let me, yeah, so that night passes uneventfully. And then um, bright and early the next morning, um, that's where we'll be. So, so Rohan, you're going to get the people that need to go back to their homes and go along with Luceri. All right. And then what are you going to do with the horse? Okay. All right. I mean, might it actually be somebody's horse? <laughs> right? I have it a bad habit of messing with with people's beasts of burden <laughs> livestock well for certain it doesn't belong to anybody on this island because this island doesn't have horses like that at all oh well i just thought when you um i mean graham wouldn't know this but i didn't think there was anything magical about the horse would you even pick that up if if say you did like your summon nature's ally and you're detecting magic on it does that hmm. Yeah, because I was uh, operating under the idea that this was just somebody's horse that <laughs> got <Yeah>. affected. <laughs> I mean, and it and it very well could be, but nobody that is in like, in our on, on our island. island. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, then I guess the day for me will be very much like yesterday. I'll take a short morning walk after my wake up routine and read some more of that book, and then decipher a scroll at the end of it all right where do you do your walk i just walk around the hero house maybe uh to a point where i can look over the village okay all right so you do your morning walk and then what do you, you do in the morning casimir just straight to work was this third day yeah it's yeah. uh scribing scrolls of shield okay all right so graham you're on your walk and then um you know, you get to a point where you're doing a little circuit around the lighthouse. And at that point, you can look down and see the village, uh, parts of it anyway. And you do see that um, uh, Mudsway is um, outside the village. He's found a little clearing in the trees there. And he seems to be practicing with his sword by himself there. Hmm. I'll narrow my eyes suspiciously. Now, um, I, I imagine I'm feeling the pull to go back to that book, but if I can resist it, I might do a little skulking of my own. Yeah, I mean, you know, you just have to be, you just got to read for about eight hours. When you start, that is up to up you. Up to me. Well, I think I can spare a little time. I'm just going to sneak up to his little camp and just uh, watch him for a little while, do a little bit of a stakeout. Okay. All right, so yeah, you... Um... You start sneaking up on him, make your rolls. Gotten better at this. Okay. Yeah, so uh, you manage to sneak up and get a good vantage point pretty close to him where um, he doesn't seem to see you, and he spends about an hour uh, working through exercises with his sword and his footwork, and uh, that's the only thing of interest that he does while you're watching. Uh, You do pick up as you're watching him, and he, his footwork is a little weird, um, and and it's a little clumsy, it seems, but it seems to be, like, intentional. So as you're watching him, trying to figure it out, it dawns on you that uh, he's used to fighting on uh, on a ship, right, on the mm-hmm. ocean. 
So his footwork is is um, practice towards that constant movement that takes place out on the ocean, and it, it makes it a little clumsy on solid ground. But otherwise, he seems to be reasonably skilled with his weapon. He doesn't uh, do anything else of interest. And then after about an hour, he stops and then heads back into the village. And you can see him for uh, the entire way. And uh, basically, he gets back into the village and then just finds somebody to go ask if they need help. And then he starts working, helping people clear away debris or you know, moving things or rebuilding things. So hmm. nobody would intentionally seek out work. <laughs> Something suspicious is going on. <laughs> Actually, you know, I probably wouldn't have even watched for that long. I don't imagine Graham is very good on a stakeout, but uh, <laughs> got bored. <laughs> so I'll, but yeah, after I see that, I'll, I'll just um, head back up to the hero house and begin my reading. All right. All right, so Rohan, you take that horse in, and um, the the mare's there, and she's directing people, do this and do that, and I need more people here. And she uh, is uh, thankful for the horse, and she gives a confused look and wonders where it came from. But um, the fact that it's so docile and just seems to go wherever somebody leads it um, is a big help to them. And so they uh, immediately start hitching it up and uh, using it to pull away rubble that um the people just aren't strong enough to move on their own um yeah so she wonders out loud who would even be brave enough to ride such a monstrous creature but um but she thanks you and then in short order you're able to depart with the uh, the people following you that um are anxious to get back to their homesteads to see what damage has been done out there that needs to be repaired so all right. Yeah, so you can have that conversation as you go. Um, it's pretty clear right away that uh, nobody is happy about that. And so they'll start asking questions like, what, which trees is it going to mark and how many? And have you ever tried to plow a field with trees all in it? That doesn't work very well. And the roots and the, the tree will shade the crops too much and they won't grow. And... So, you know, they're they're basically grumping about it the entire path, it's an entire way. All right. So the, oh, that uh that seems to shut them up, although they you know, they do a lot of grumbling about it. But um other than that, the the trip um goes in silence for the most part. So it's not very fast because, you know, they've got carts and wagons and they're they're bringing supplies and things that they grabbed to flee with and so you know, um, less, less or he's not, um, uh, well enough to travel very fast anyways, but she is, you know, sitting up on a wagon and her cat is sitting on, um, her lap and she doesn't have much to say on the trip, but you do start making the rounds, dropping people off where they went. And, um, uh, eventually you make it just as it's getting towards evening or actually never mind at, it is evening when you make it to her home. So it seems unmarked by the storm. There is no debris nearby and the home, uh, such as it was, you know, the parts of it that were exposed to the air because, you know, most of it is built into the hill, doesn't seem to have sustained any damage. And you can look back between the hills into the swamp and um, you can see evidence there of, you know, storm damage you know broken limbs and fallen trees and stuff but um, nothing that is going to matter much to a swamp so at this point um, you know she'd been insistent like let the other like we'll take the other people first and so as you made that circuit along the southern edge uh, dropping people off and then got closer to hers the uh, the group that were situated uh north of her area they they say they can make the trip on their own and they thank you for the escort and um, they head on their way so she offers if you'd like you can stay the night at her place and head back home in the morning if you'd like to all right so um let me make a roll here they're also burdened with a horse oh okay mm. <laughs> only half paying attention <laughs> 
This is a <laughs> well. It's not just a call back to you, the very first series of sessions where all we did with the mayor was bring random stuff that we found. So I'm just glad you're continuing the tradition. <laughs> Here's a big horse. It's like, oh, thanks. <laughs> Dead birds, <laughs> unmatched oars. <laughs> Here's an oar. All right, so uh, she offers you the for you to stay there the night, so you can head back in the morning, and then uh, and you you um you take her up on that. But as you do, you get this overwhelming feeling of something wrong. Now, uh, it's hard to narrow in what is causing that feeling. It doesn't seem to be her. It's just like a scent you picked up or uh, a sound you might have heard, but the hairs on the back of your neck stand up and you get the strong sense that something is wrong. Um, all right. So she's like, no, that won't be necessary at all. My, uh, my home is quite safe and casting a spell in there would be quite dangerous. Do you not wish for you to get hurt? Yeah. So, uh, you say that and she looks at you and you know, she's tiny even compared to you. And she's looking up in her, her, um, over, grown nose and her hideous face but her eyes are gleaming at you as her as her lips turn up and she's like oh yes there are eyes in the trees and she sort of like motions her head back towards the swamp which is now completely dark and so basically you know you've got moonlight out here but it seems to not penetrate the the swamp so between the the hills there that that um path into that uh, swamp it's completely dark but you gaze that direction, and sure enough, you do start to see here and there some uh, red eyes in the darkness. Yeah, I mean, they are they are like that in the sense that, you know, they're red, red eyes, same color. These ones don't seem to move like those other ones did. Those other ones seem to, like, move around on the creature they were in. These ones seem to stay in place. Oh, yes, but not to us. They know better than to step foot in my home. Dark creatures. I, I don't know. I don't know what they would be called, but dark creatures of evil. No, no. No, no. These ones feel much different. If you really pay attention, you can tell the difference. It's the feeling you get. And then she does like a little cackle and she starts, you know, walking up to her house. But she seems unconcerned. Okay. All right, so you um, follow her into her home, and sh and she shuts the door. And it's a very, um, from the outside, it looks like it would be a very small place, but it's actually quite large and uh, well made, with plenty of headroom. And you would expect that you know, being so close to the swamp, there would be a powerful, unpleasant odor. But inside her house, there's no such thing. There, um, there are plenty of odors. Uh, none of which are classified as unpleasant. It's very cluttered in a way, um, although there's plenty of room to move around without tripping on things, but every surface seems to have something on it, whether it's, you know, vials or, uh, you know, different components, you know, mushrooms and plants and things like that. Little contraptions here and there, um, wands and stuff like that. Uh, but she um, beckons you to sit down on one of the large chairs that's in in the room in front of the fireplace. And uh, she makes sure that the door is closed and barred. And then, the, you know, she begins to go about getting a fire started, which in her, which in her case um, basically just means she waves her hand at the fireplace and, you know, the, the wood in there flares to life and starts to spread warmth through the room. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but yeah, then, um, you know, she'll sit down and she's willing to talk to you about the swamp as much as you'd like. Uh, yeah. So she is more than happy to talk about the swamp. So she, she goes on at length. Um, a few things that she says that strike you is, you know, she mentions if you, if you look at maps that have been made of the island or if you talk to people from the island, um, they'll give you the sense that the swamp you know, it's in this area and it takes up this much space. And she says that they're, um, they're all completely wrong. 
and that it's enormous. It's it's much bigger than they ever would than anybody would imagine, and that um, there's a magic about it because if you take a circuit around the outer edge of the island, then you could use that to determine how much you know area this swamp takes up, but it wouldn't be accurate once you start into it. It it goes on much much further than it should be able to. And that uh, you know, there's all manner of like more than she could ever catalog, and she waves at some books on a shelf, and I mean it's just full of massive bound books, and she says, you know, the the amount of uh, plants and animals in there is far more than one person could catalog, even in in uh, uh, in a longer life than than most had available until recently, and of course dangers as well, creatures that um, you know, defy description, animals of every sort, venomous, you know, creatures, venomous or poisonous plants and fruits. And, and the, the, the other issue that people would have with the swamp if they had the courage to venture into it is that the land changes constantly. Like one, a path that you took yesterday won't exist tomorrow. And, uh, you know, she goes on to describe the way that, you know, the land in the swamp isn't necessarily connected underneath so like millions of tiny islands that float about constantly the paths are always changing and so those are basically the things she mentions about the swamp so but she does say she does say that it the the haunting of the mine has nothing to do with the swamp the, the creatures in the swamp prefer to stay in the swamp but they also just seem to prefer others stay out as well um yeah so you know the night Draw, the night wears on, and you know eventually her energy just gives out. She's just too tired from the events of the previous days, and so she, you know, bids you good night and retires to a room in the back that you assume would be her bedroom. She gives you like a blanket and uh, tells you to make yourself comfortable, and she thanks you again for all your help. Um, so two two thing. Well, one thing I'd have to ask first that I forgot about, um, or no, that I have to say first, is that uh, that Raven um, preferred not to come in. So, you know, it's outside. Not that you're worried about it, but just, you know, it's not in here with you. But as she goes to bed, she, you know, says, make yourself comfortable and thanks you again. And, and then she retires to that room. So this would be about an hour before midnight. And, um, you know, you're pretty tired yourself. So, okay. All right, so for that day, Graham, you did your reading, and then you want to do some identifying. Yeah, uh, using use magic device to get the DC. One moment. 25 plus the spell level. So I guess, um, who has those now? Casimir has them in the bag of holding now. Yeah, I'll come tap at his door after I finished up my reading and <laughs> wait there. <laughs> Enter. Uh, Casimir, it's me, Graham. Hmm. Don't touch anything. <laughs> oh, okay. I just came to see if I could take a look at some of those scrolls and figure out what they are. I'll motion towards the bag. <laughs> All right, I'll uh, start digging around in there. Somehow it won't work the way it's supposed to for me. <laughs> you pull out a it. halfling skull. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, I'll, I'll get them and then I'll just... uh get to the door and be like bye and <laughs> go away <laughs> and I'll pick one at random and, and try to figure it out do you want those rolls in the tower or just uh no just roll them okay use magic device here we go dirty and that okay so that lets you identify it <laughs> right uh decipher the written spell yeah I guess same thing right mm. okay so the um the one that you identify is a scroll of arcane lock. Hmm. I'll identify that now in your inventory. Now, here's the thing. I remember identifying a, a scroll of arcane lock and using it in the last battle or near the last showdown. Yeah. Does that automatically identify any others you get? No, it's per use. It takes a minute to do. Okay. And I can try again, but if I 
Well, I don't well, know. Well, I mean, you you did you did find more than one of that. Oh, okay, catch you. All right, yeah. So I'll I'll move on to the next one then. Okay. Hmm. Thirty three. All right. So that one is disguised self. Uh, a scroll of disguised self. Okay. And for there was three, right? Um, there were. Let's see. Hopefully there no, were a lot that more was than. It. Oh, okay. That was it for scrolls, because <laughs> the other one had already been identified. The, um, you know, Uh-oh. the one. Old portal. <laughs> yeah, that one. Okay. Yeah. So that's it for the scrolls. Then you have four more items that are unidentified. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I can't identify those with use magic device. Unfortunately, well, I mean. I could activate them blindly. Hmm. Which one would you pick randomly to activate blindly? Let's do that. Can I, can I do you that? You know can you I would. Try to, I know. I, I want to do it secretly, get it out of the room without him noticing. That would be no problem. I'm not paying right. attention. I'm hunched over a, probably a, a small table just writing. Taking a zero. All right. So I'm probably have... taking a negative. <laughs> you have a small... Um, tan sack that appears normal and empty. Okay. And then you have a small pouch that has a fine powder in it. And mm, then you have not that exciting. a lens like that would co- go over your eye. Okay. And then you have I'll a necklace. Um, yeah, like a red, a necklace with red spheres, mm. like red beads. The red beads signal great fortune to me. So I think this is the one I'll try. So I'll creep out of the hero house for safety and uh, go outside with some down s- towards somewhere. The, uh, <laughs> down towards the ocean might be a good idea in case you catch on fire. On the By the beach? Yeah, don't we have like a yeah. um, a stairwell in the cliff face that goes down to the beach? So uh, yeah. W- walking yeah. up it. Or... There was a wooden, yeah, uh, built into the cliff face. Yeah, so I'll make my way down to the beach and uh, try to activate it. Which, right. according to the skill, requires a 25. Let's see how I do. Kind of 101. <laughs> oh. Got a 30. All right. So you make your way down to the beach, and it's a nice, calm night. And, the you know, the the waves are slapping against the sand, and there's a good breeze. And so you've got this necklace, and you're turning it around, looking at it, trying to determine. And, um, you know, as you're holding it, uh, you know, it's like a gold chain and it's got these red spheres hanging from it. And, for, you know, you just, for whatever reason, it makes sense to you that you grab one of those and you give it a toss. And, um, you know, it, it flies easier than you'd expect. It doesn't have a lot of weight, so you wouldn't expect it to go very far. But it goes about 70 feet um, out over the water and then explodes. Um, <laughs> you know, it detonates into a fireball. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, you know, like you've seen many times before, but um, that that is essentially that lets you know this is a necklace of fireballs. So and, what? Uh, so I I grabbed one of the beads and threw it. Does it like? Are there less beads on it now? Or yeah. Okay. Um. So I've identified it for you. And yeah, I think I'll put that one on. <laughs> I don't think I have anything around my. Oh, I have a. Never mind. <clears throat> So yeah, your constitution, right? Yeah, I can't take that off or I'll die. Wither immediately. away. Well, now, <laughs> this doesn't count as a worn magic item. Oh, okay, gotcha. So you can still wear it. Is it small enough to fit in my pouch, Um, you think? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, so I'll tuck that one in there and then uh, I'll put the rest away for now. Well, okay, so if you put that and that's identified and I'll put that in your inventory... Okay. Uh, okay. So that should be in your inventory now. Now, um, so this is, uh, this is, I'll put, I'll change it. So this is a type four. So that's in your inventory now. And if you, you know, you can look at that um, description and it will tell you what that means. Like this means that it has one bead that is 8d6, two that are 6d6, two that are 4d6, and four that are 2d6. And um, I you have any way of knowing which one I used? Well, you used the two one one of the 2d6 ones. <laughs> Cuz they're 
gotcha. like at the end towards the clasp. So, so if you want to set up the attack, um, that would be you throw it and they get a, and you can throw it up to 70 feet and, um, they get a reflex save DC 14 for half damage. Okay. Yeah. I'll put that in there. Yeah. And, um, that would probably round out my night. I, I want to try that uh, no machine one more time to top off my wand of magic missiles, but I want to give a little bit of a buffer period before. Okay. You know, I, I you know, Rohan said to wait for Fenrith to come back and for him to be there, but I kind of think conditions exhaust themselves after a certain amount of time, and I'll be free it's of that. It's kind of Fenrith's fault because he didn't come back. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna wait. Maybe tomorrow night I'll do that. But I'm I'm gonna call it good for today. <laughs> okay. All right. And then Casimir, did you need to make any rolls or anything? Uh, let's see, I don't know if scribing a scroll requires a roll or not. I think it's just time and gold, technically, and XP. All right. All right. So then you get those you know, scribe that stuff and then you guys um, head to bed and then um, let me make a roll or two here. All right. So then you're sleeping and then Rohan, um, while you're sleeping, you have a, a dream, very, very vivid dream. feels lucid except for not in the sense that you can control it, but that you are aware of everything that's happening and that you're in a dream. But in this dream, you um, you have a repeat, uh, basically, of a vision you had once before, but you're soaring high above the forest that dominates the um, northeastern part of the island, and especially now because it extends much further than it used to, um, almost impossibly. It's like you've made your way to a plane of trees somehow because it, it stretches eternally almost. But, um, you know, as you're soaring above that, you are high enough that you can see your the village of Cradle and the surrounding lands. And then, um, you know, from the center of this massive forest, 1,000, 2,000 miles away, you can see a rot starting to spread. And uh, in your vision, it spreads possibly fast until it engulfs everything including the village, and um, that's when you wake up bright and early as the sun rises, and um, Lissari is already awake, and she's, you know, working to produce some form of breakfast, and it smells good, whatever she's making. From where you can see, there are a lot of, you know, vegetables and mushrooms and things like that, but all right. Um, and then, yeah, so she, she says there, there's a lot of, uh, nonsense in dreams. Sometimes they tell us the truth. Um, you'll, you'll have to, well, sometimes even when we're given a vision, we can't discern the truth of it. Sometimes the truth we discern is, turns out to be a lie. Think, think long on it. Don't make any rash decision. Yeah, she um, she thanks you for helping her get back home, and she wishes you well and uh, says goodbye, and then there you are, um, free to return home. Okay. All right, and then back at the village, um, you know, the, the night went uneventful for you, and you wake up, and, uh, well, um, we'll call that good. We'll, we'll jump ahead and say that you've reached that... 48 total hours, Graham. Okay. And that'd be two more days worth of scribing you could do, Casimir. And then um, two more days of identifying if anybody wants to do that. And then Graham, so finishing that book has a, a remarkable effect on you in that it will increase your wisdom, wisdom. score. It's by the power um, of the book, by so five, five points. Point takes me up to an 11 that's actually a uh yeah a huge difference <laughs> so i've been thinking about this for a while I so think. um you know that has a uh profound effect on you because 
with that greater wisdom um, also comes an awareness of the seemingly every time that you have not shown great wisdom <laughs> in your like life. Whole life. And so that's something you'll need to struggle with uh, now that you're more aware of things. Uh, you see uh, a lot of your past faults. <laughs> is that emotional damage? That was it my is. last. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but it was against when, Rohan. When, <laughs> with that increase in wisdom, the, the, the mistakes become very clear and, um, so you'll have, you'll have that to struggle with, but it does increase. And, you know, once you're finished reading that book, um, like you set it down and you're pondering over this and then, uh, I, you know, some motion catches your eye and you watch it just slowly turn to ash right there on the table. And then, um, then you're left with a pile of ash on the table. Um, so that happens for you. And then, um, you guys will say are, you know, after Rohan's home uh, eating and Fenrith comes back and describes the work he's been doing, trying to get the temple finished. And then, uh, Mudsway comes in and he says, um, you know, I wanted to thank you for, for saving me and for your, your hospitality, but it is time that I and moving on, I need to try and find a way back home. And so he talks about how he's convinced some people to help him build a, you know, a small boat that he thinks should be able to make the trip over the ocean. And the other thing that happens is um, you hear like a, a shouting coming from the village and then someone runs up and, you know, pounds on the door and they say, um, heroes, you must come. The There's a... Um, a party of dwarves in the village that are looking for you. They say they're here to thank you for uh, setting them free. Yeah, they, they, call um, they call themselves Vainbeard Dwarves, and they say that you had some hand in r restoring their city, but that's all I know. And then he plugs his ears and runs away so he can give no more answers. <laughs> <laughs> And that's where we'll have to stop for the day. So, all right, all right. Thanks, man. It was a lot oh, of fun. Deal. Thanks, man. Yeah, thanks everyone for playing. Well, we'll pick this <laughs> up again next time. Hopefully, everyone will be here and um, we'll be ready to go. All right. That's Do such you a... want a list of? This has been a Death Watch production. Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.